Here we are again in the office of Robert B. Horton, uh, just on the eve of his departure to his new assignment in Europe. One of the things that uh, comes up repeatedly when we talk to people, we're always supposed to be, as they say in my business, ascertaining the needs of the community. People are terribly concerned about education. Yes. And yes. by what they perceive to be a failure of education, yes. by the turning out of young yes. people, or, or perhaps never even keeping them long enough to turn them out for anything, but but just sort of moving blocks of kids along until they finally come to the end of the line and are mm -hmm. not really prepared to do anything. A and that seems to disturb more and more people. Maybe that's the yeah. first step. Mm -hmm. They have to be really upset about it before yeah. we can get substantive change. But what's your feeling about our educational setup? Maybe just not in Cleveland, but in this whole country. Well, I think in this whole country, it is a major crisis. It is the most important single problem to be solved. And the fact is that if you look at demographic trends, and, and heaven knows every kid who is in school now will be in employment or unemployment by the year 2000, if you look at the trends, you will find that this nation, which has been built on technical skills, is going to fall far short of the required technical skills in only 15 years' time. There will be 600,000 fewer technically qualified people in the United States in the year 2000 than there are today. And that is a very serious state of affairs. And it stems, of course, from the secondary educational system. We've simply got to get a, uh, get a, a, a border problem, which in our own city here in Cleveland results in 50% of the kids dropping out. Yes. That's just unacceptable. It's unacceptable on a human level. It's certainly unacceptable on an economic level. And I'm very glad that this has now come to the top of the agenda for all the politicians and I think us corporate types also mm -hmm. understand that our enlightened self-interest is to make sure that we get that graduation rate way up. And we cannot uh, allow this drift toward uh, two societies, an affluent, contemporary, educated society that does things and they also ran. I, to I totally agree. I, you know, we have the memories of the riots in Huff not so many years ago. We simply can't allow a system uh, to continue to exist where a large proportion of our kids who happen, mm. are by and large, to be black uh, or minorities of one sort or, or, or another um, are educationally underprivileged. Uh, that is, a, if you look at it only in the meanest sense, that is a formula for social unrest uh, which is not going to make people's lives at all pleasant. And what ultimately can we as citizens of this region do? Well, I think we can start off by supporting our schools uh, very enthusiastically. I think we can start off by saying that this inner city problem is not something that we can forget when we motor out to Shaker Heights or, in my case, Hunting Valley in the evening. Uh, we've got to take a personal involvement. We've got to reinforce the PTAs. Uh, I'm very enthusiastic, as you know, about the scholarship and escrow program, which I think yes. will, which will, which will do a lot. Uh, I think we've got to provide the kids with role models uh, that say, there are more successful ways of, of shaping your life than being a drug pusher or a pimp or a, uh, you know, a prostitute. And uh, that is something that uh, uh, we, each and every one of us, have got to try and build into our personal timetable um, when we decide on our allocation of time. You know, we've not talked about oil yet, or no. this building, or what you're going to do next. What will be your assignment? T tell us what they're going to have you doing over there when you go back over there as the, as the boss. Well, the answer is rather a lot. <laughs> <laughs> rather a lot. I'm staying as chairman of the board here, but yes. I should be non-executive mm -hmm. chairman, but I'll be coming back half a dozen times a year or so to Cleveland to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to have responsibility for the United Kingdom, where BP has roughly another 25% of his interests. Uh, I'm going to chair a few of the, of the boards of the major businesses. And I'm also going to be in charge of, uh, of all our political and government and external affairs. So uh, and that's worldwide. So I shall be having a fairly hectic life uh, traveling around the world uh, in that regard uh, alone, <laughs> let alone everything else. What is the energy future of, of this uh, world right now? Uh, you almost have to look at it as a global thing. You can't anymore, you I think, talk about this country or this country. You've got to be global. Yes. Um, how much accessible fossil fuel is there under the, under the surfaces that we can get at? Well, there, is, there really is quite a lot. And, I mean, if you want a good laugh, you need only to go back 10 years when people were talking about an energy crisis yes. and, you know, we're going to run out in, in 10 years. It is a global problem. The, the problem, though, is, is uh, multiplied in a sense, in that uh, something like 75% of all the reserves are in one small uh, portion of the Earth, namely the Middle East. And so you can't disentangle that from the political future of the Middle East.
In the long run, uh, by which I mean 20 or 30 years, uh, I believe we will be moving away from the burning of fossil fuels uh, for no better reason, perhaps, than the greenhouse effect and CO2, yes. which is a serious problem. And we will have to be addressing the question of, uh, of how we provide that energy. And it seems to me that there is little question but that the answer is, uh, is, is nuclear power. Mm -hmm. uh, but between now and then, we've got to do a lot of muddling through. Um, America, at the moment, has something like 50% uh, uh, energy self-sufficiency, maybe slightly more than that. Uh, that is rapidly depleting. Uh, we have the possibility of uh, very large new reserves up in the Arctic, which we hope we'll be able to, to explore and develop. And we've also got quite a lot of gas around. But uh, there's no question in my mind but that uh, the years from 1995 to maybe 2010 are going to be ones in which we see recurring energy crises. Uh, and we better start thinking about that now. And the price will have to go up of necessity, won't it? Yes, the price will go up. <coughs> it will go up to about $30 in real terms a barrel compared with today, which is about $16 a barrel. Uh, and it will then be capped out by alternative fuel forms, be it coal, be it gas, be it nuclear. And probably the oil will ultimately end up in the, uh, in the uh, tanks of aircraft because it's going to be difficult to find uh, yes. anything else to do except that. That's probably right. I mean, I think the, that, that ultimately um, oil will be used for automotive purposes, aircraft and motor cars. Uh, it'll be used for lubricants and uh, those other essential oily purposes, but also making plastics of increasing complexity, making composite ma uh, materials, substituting for, for steel in construction, substituting for aluminum in making um, aircraft frames and those sort of things. Uh, let's turn to politics just for a moment. You've been here, yeah. you've lived uh, in this country uh, yeah, before, uh, but uh, as you've watched this uh, presidential campaign uh, yes. work out, uh, what's been your uh, thought on it? Uh, it must seem weird to a person <laughs> who has the parliamentary system where the party in power has the leader. Yes, I, I suppose, I mean, the first thing I have to say is that you're right, the congressional system of government is one that is very, is very different. Uh, uh, people don't realize that in Britain we have uh, what Lord Hailsham called an elected dictatorship. Uh, <laughs> and for four years, if the Prime Minister has a significant majority in the House of Commons, then uh, he or she uh, can more or less dictate what the agenda is going to be. Um, uh, having said that, and accepting the congressional sense uh, uh, form of government, uh, I'm bound to say I, I think it takes an awful long time to elect a president. Uh, the, uh, the process whereby somebody starts to run two or three years uh, before the election seems to me to be one that is, uh, uh, I would characterize as being slightly inefficient, if nothing else. Mm -hmm. um, however, we're now in the final furlong or so, and I'm going to follow from a distant shore the, uh, the antics or otherwise of the <laughs> candidates. <laughs> well, uh, maybe just a final question here about, uh, about we mentioned a global economy a while yes. ago. Uh, we have to have some global tranquility. Yeah. And there does seem to be an indication that the Soviets uh, really mean Glasnost, that there maybe will yes. be a perestroika there, which will straighten things out a bit. Uh, how do you feel about that? And how important is it to the world to have, have some peace on those matters? I think it's vitally important. Uh, it seems to me that, uh, that Glasnost in, in, uh, in Russia is matched in importance only by what we're seeing happening in China at the moment with the emergence of Li Pong as the premier of the largest nation on earth and, and, and one that appears to uh, be prepared to embrace its own form of Glasnost, economic Glasnost. Uh, I think that we're going to see uh, a global economy transformed. Uh, and I think that, uh, that those two things do hold the greatest possibility of peace that has occurred, certainly in my mature lifetime. Do you get to have a vacation before you set to work on the new job over I'm there? Going back, <laughs> I'm going back home on, on, uh, later this week, and then I'm going to spend one week in my country house out near Oxford, where I shall tend my garden, which I'm afraid has been sorely neglected um, whilst I've been away. Uh, and then I should be back on the job in London. Well, I'm sure we'll see you in Cleveland from time to Certainly time. Certainly will. And we wish you and Sally Godspeed. Thank you very you, much. You've indeed. been awfully good citizens of this town. Well, we've enjoyed it greatly, and we're going to miss you all a lot. Thanks, Bob. Okay. Bob Horton.
Right now it's time to take a look at how the traffic is moving this morning. Here's Chris Smith. Well, believe it or not, it is snowing downtown and to the south and the southwest side of the city. Especially, uh, we're noticing it's not affecting traffic as yet, but it may a bit later as far as visibility is concerned. Out on I-480, we're clearing out. Just a minimal delay of six minutes eastbound and four to five minutes westbound through the construction zone. 77, five minutes off the pace from Rockside. The first slowdown at Fleet. That lasts up to the Interbelt 71's Metro General Curve. Three quarters full inbound I-90 West remains back to 44th Street, about a four to five minute delay. The Sharways, boy, they haven't been in the headlines for a while. They won't be today either. They are delay free coming into the downtown area. And 271 at Mayfield poses no problem. Highlighting Northeast Ohio, slow spot this morning, I-480. Chris Smith, Metro Traffic Control. Thanks, Chris. Joel tackles a weighty subject in a few moments. Right now, here's Dan with more on that four letter word. <laughs> Lee, there was a time when you were crying for snow, but uh, I guess everybody's looking for spring now. Let's go to the radar and we'll see what Chris was talking about. We do have uh, a lot of green showing up on the radar. That is a mixture of rain and snow, but temperatures are above freezing, so it should all be melting as it falls and hits the ground. If you're traveling out of the area today, this is the way it looks. You're heading south, lots of sunshine, 57 degrees, sunny in Charleston, West Virginia today. But anywhere up to the north, you'll run into this snow. Toronto, 40 degrees and some light snow. Our forecast indicates some showers and some flurries. High temperature today under mostly cloudy skies, 42 degrees. We'll be back. Hope you can stay with us.